Hey everyone, <clears throat> sorry hen. Hey everyone, today on Garden Fork, we're gonna go to my friend Gary's office. He has a store called Wine Library. It's a giant wine store. And he also has an amazing website and a video blog. It's winelibrarytv.com. And he's a really busy guy, and he's got a ton of energy, and he was nice enough to set up a time that we could go over there. I mean, well, I went over there. So anyway, uh, Gary was nice enough to set aside some time today that I could go over there and, and talk about wine. Because I, I like to drink wine, but I don't know a lot about it, and I'm a little intimidated by it. And you don't quite know what the right thing to buy is, and your friend always seems to know more about it than you do. So, so I thought it was really cool that he would sit down with us. So we're going to go there, and we'll talk about wine. Let's go. We're here today with um, my good friend Gary from winelibrary.com and he has a video show almost every day about tasting wine and I met him a couple times at some different events and I asked him if we could come out here to New Jersey at his store which is amazing by the way and this is the set I don't know if you ever watched Wine Library TV TV sorry um, <laughs> he also has a billboard on the interstate yeah it makes it fun yeah you know, I have to drive by myself and wave it makes it fun <laughs> So I, want, I wanted to ask Gary about wine, because I am not a wine expert, and I have friends that are kind of a little snooty about it, and they want me to come to dinner, and I don't quite know what to bring, and, and you're the expert. And what I like is that you put it in words that people understand. Before I say so. anything, I just want to tell every single person that's watching that I'm very fortunate, knock on wood, and the show has done very well, and I get approached by... 13, 15 people a week asking me to be on their show, and even though that's great exposure and everything, I don't really do it because I'm so busy with everything that I'm doing, and I just want you guys to know how lucky you are to have what I think is, on, and I'm, I know it's your view, but honestly, you, this is one of the best guys. I know for a fact that uh, even on iTunes, one person that uh, rated my show garbage and I'm a jerk off said you're the best show ever. Oh really? And, and that guy, and listen, I understand. I come, I'm an over the top guy. If you've ever watched my library TV, I'm a yeah. certain way, but this is one of the most down to earth, great guys out there, and I'm very honored to be on this show, so I wanna thank you for oh, that. Oh thanks. Yeah. Speaking about wine, same thing. The problem with wine and why I do Wine Library TV is because wine is broken in America. People are scared of wine, they're intimidated, yeah. and and it's terrible. People critique each other when you order a bad bottle of wine, people are dissing on each other. It's a complete mess and what scares me is that it's just fundamentally scary to see our society go there. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna sit down, do this show, and change the wine world. And the way I'm doing that is getting people to embrace their own palates. Let me ask you a question. Do you like mangoes? Yeah. You do? Do you like escargot? Snails? No. Okay. I love both of those things. So clearly we agree on some things, but we disagree on something. Yep. Wine is food. Really, wine is food. And I've never seen anybody second guess themselves when they order toppings on a pizza. If they want pineapple and bacon, God damn it, they order pineapple and bacon. <laughs> but with wine, it's this fear and intimidation. And so my three keys to success with wine are one, forget everybody else. If anybody wants to you know, make fun of you or joke on you or intimidate you, punch them in the face. I mean, it means nothing. It's the stupidest thing of all time. Number two, try different things. That's a huge problem. People find a wine they like, they're like, ooh, mm. I love this, this is my new favorite wine, and they order it constantly. Yeah, they order it all the time. That's right, because they find a comfort zone and they feel like that's okay. That's what makes wine so great, is that the product changes so often. So, my big, big thing is to definitely try as many different things as possible, because if your favorite food of all time is Doritos, but you've never had it, how are you gonna know what's your favorite food? And the same thing with wine. All right. If you don't try different things. And finally, just have fun and, and embrace what wine is. Wine is one of the few products that are good for you that we like to consume. Even food's yeah, dangerous yeah, yeah. now, right? I mean, you know. Oh yeah, don't get me started on that. Wine, not... wine, wine is good for you. It's got great health qualities. It's an excellent product. And I, I just think that it's you know something that we're very fortunate. Plus it brings people together. A lot of sense of family, which I love. Oh, that's actually a big thing. Cause we, you know, it's like, it's, it kind of makes you, it, you, I don't drink it alone. Right. I, I always say my big thing that somebody really liked uh, that they're quoting in a newspaper next week, they asked me for permission, is wine is the new board game. You know, board games used All to right, bring yeah. people together in the 50s and 60s, and now wine's doing that with wine tasting parties and wine groups. And, and, and anywhere you are, whether you're in middle America, there's a great website called localwineevents.com, which you can go there and find free wine tastings in your area. And I get a lot of emails 
from you know Iowa and Nebraska and you know these places and they're like Gary I'm just getting into wine but we don't have a lot of options you're showing all these products but we don't have these things yeah. the big thing is is to find and create little tasting groups get involved in forums even if they leave comments in your video now and yeah. say hey I want to get into it who else is out there you find you a form a, like, a meetup a wine tasting meetup that's right on meetup.com which a lot of people have done on our forum on Wine Library TV a lot of people have made friends and it's a sense of community I've done a lot of Vaniac which are my fans that's what they call themselves Vaniac parties lately and people just constantly come up to me as happy as they are to see me they're like thank you so much for introducing me to all these new friends that I have and so that's an amazing thing but at the end of the day the other thing that people need to realize is this is a great wine and because Eric's here I wanted pop it. This is an $80 bottle of wine but nobody drinks that every day. I mean, I drink seven, eight dollar wines all the time. There's so many great wines under $15 and people don't realize and that's what I think intimidates people about wine is that price has no factor. Yeah, yeah. I've had so many $100 wines that suck and amazing $10 wines. And so there is some education, but I think you gotta roll the dice and you gotta put yourself out there and you gotta try different things. It's a lot better than asking for a date. You're not scared, the wine won't talk back to you. Yeah, It'll take, yeah wine you doesn't know, say no. No, wine <laughs> does not say no, so try it, embrace it, and try to remember, you know, a lot of people, if you're watching this, you're obviously a little tech savvy. So you know what, text yourself what you like. That's my new thing, text yourself. You have a bottle, because nobody can remember, oh I like this. You text yourself and it's there, and then when you go to a wine shop or a restaurant, you say, I like this, give me something close, but move me along the ladder of wine tastes. And that's how you really, you have to build your own wine library. So, okay. you know, it, it's very important to really understand how fun wine is. I hate all the snootiness that comes along with wine, the intimidation, yeah. and hopefully with WLTV, we're, we're changing that a little bit. <laughs> so can I have some, can I ask a couple questions? Yeah, fire away. So, what about um, I, I've seen, I've read a little bit about this now. Boxed wines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are there are there good ones out there? Are there? You know, there's a big movement in Australia and in London for quality boxed wine because that culture really embraces wine at a very youthful age. So a lot of the 18, because you can drink at that age in those countries, 18 to 20, you know five-year-olds are really embracing wine and they're fun and now they're starting to put quality wines in box wine. Uh, meaning wines that would normally go into maybe a $10 bottle right. but a box wine could cost maybe $15 and you get a lot more value. Um, to me in the US a lot of those brands are not available in box wine form. Then I, so it's not quite there yet? It's not there yet. I also believe that in the US we're a far less mature wine market and people that are getting into wine don't want to drink box wine because there's it's taboo. Even screw tops have been an issue even though they're a great thing. Screw tops are great. I was going to ask you about the screw tops. Do not, screw tops are great because a cork can get tainted from bacteria and ruin it in an $80 bottle of wine. If this had a screw top it's not going to happen. Yeah. So even though people think it's Boone's Farm and Mad Dog 2020 are like oh the fanciness of it, that's stupid, old pretentious wine world, again, talking, I wish every wine was in a screw top. Back, back to box wine, I still think you're gonna find better six to ten dollar wines on the shelf that are gonna be so much better than a ten or fifteen dollar box wine. All right. Even though the box wine is equivalent to three or four or two dollars a bottle, I just still think you're for four for five dollars you can buy much better wine than what's in box wine. So I don't think it, it really makes a value yet. All right. So how do you how do you taste wine? So let's talk about wine. It, everybody tastes wine differently. Let's talk about pizza again. I just love using that as my favorite. I like eating pizza for, I like it cold, first of all. Second of all, I like taking the cheese off and just eating that part, but the cheese has to be on. I have to like first have it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can't cook it without it. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. You know, so I gotta take the cheese off, and my favorite part is to eat that, and then the crust. So there's like many different things that make me like a pizza or what I like about a pizza. Other people don't like that. They want it hot as hell. They like the toppings or the cheese. Everybody's got their own style. For me, what's great about wine is the nose. I'm all about the bouquet. So my big thing is, to always smell it and, and, and you know it's really interesting and I like to, to talk about things in a normal term. You know for me this has kind of you know a, a, almost like a eucalyptus minty kind of aspect to it but also dark cherry and a little chocolate and then it gets a little dusty. Yeah. It's yeah. like that almost like you know like sheetrock dust you know. It did, I, I couldn't think of the word but dusty is the word. Right and so I like the nose a lot. To me aromatics and the nose are such a major component but a lot of people don't and a lot of people pop and pour. For me the way I like to drink wine is the first thing I do is is really really like to smell it and then my big thing is to you know You can, you can drink it, I'm so used to it, I'm sorry, I know. I'm a baby for not drinking that. Anyway, what's key is this. Getting the wine in as many places in your palate as you can. Now yeah. this is early in the morning and I haven't had anything and you're gonna see it's very dry. 
you know, but- I like that though. Oh, I like it too. I like it too. But what's imperative for me is to get it in every part of the mouth because then your full palate, your tasting, you know, buds will be able to taste everything because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of second, third, fourth tier flavors in wine that comes from the soil in the barrels. People are always like, Gary, you say blackberry, strawberry, where does that come from? Do they add that in the barrels? No, grapes naturally create these secondary flavors. All right. And they're not very pronounced. It's not like we're drinking this wine and it tastes exactly like blackberry or dust. It's got subtle hints, still tasting grapey and wine. You know, you can get very nerdy about it. My big key is to find things that I enjoy. Um, I'm very, my three components are the nose, the initial taste, and obviously the finish. If it's not smooth, right. people don't like it. People want silky smooth with a lot of flavor, but some people like really big fruit, like in Shiraz, is like yellow tail that a lot of people like to drink. A lot of fruit with a little sugar like that has. Other people like really dirty, vegetal wines. It really comes down, I like vegetables more than I like fruit. Yeah. So I go for wines that are a little bit more old world, from Burgundy, that are a little stinky, tastes like mushrooms mixed with broccoli, mixed with like dirty feet, smelly socks, armpit, I mean it's, it's that. That's what I get into a little bit more than, than other people because that's what my flavor is. So it really just depends on your own palate, but exploring and finding things and then really getting, if anything, I hope you really get into the nose because it really brings a lot to the flavor. It adds to your overall senses of when you're tasting the wine. I never thought to swish it around your mouth like that. But that is true because your tongue, the taste buds on the different parts of the tongue taste different things. No question. And what you should do for fun, no matter if it's a $1 wine when you do this, and hopefully you'll watch this and then you'll do this, is taste it first straight and then do the Swiss string and you'll be amazed on how different the wine tastes. You know, it's pretty rad. People, are, people don't want to learn about wine. Wine is too hard, you know? It's like, why would I want to learn about it? It's so much easier to drink a beer or a, yeah. or a scotch or something. And I totally understand. My thing is you don't have to learn about wine. Just drink it, enjoy it, it brings family together. Scotch does not bring family together. No, it doesn't. You know, that's kind of like by yourself in the corner kind of thing, you know? Well, that's, I drink scotch. So. <laughs> exactly. you know, but you're good because you put it in words that people understand. I mean, I go to the wine store and they have these little cards and these yeah. little, and they use all these words and I'm like. Terroir and cassis and yields and, uh, you, know, you know. Yeah, I mean, to me, if I said, this wine reminds me of an explosion between Optimus Prime and Megatron, or, or this is as challenging as Kid Icarus was for Nintendo, or it reminds, you, know, you know, references help people. It helps me very much to yeah. learn things based on that. These are the props. I mean, look at this. Piper and Hogan, you know, Tecmo Bowl. I mean, when, these are the kind of things I put on the show. It's just who I am. And yeah, I think yeah. just the same reason your show kicks ass is because you are who you are, you do your thing, and that's it. And most importantly, here's what it comes down to at the end of the day, and this is what I say every time I meet anybody when you do cheers before dinner, to good health, right? Yeah. Because everything else is easy, and otherwise, you know, if you don't have that. So there you go. That's our interview with Gary of WineLibraryTV.com. I want to thank him a lot for doing that because I know he's a busy guy, but I learned, I learned something there. And also you can visit his site, winelibrarytv.com, and there's a, a user forum area there where you can go to and learn about wines and post your thoughts and read what other people have said as well, and I think that's really neat. And we're working on that for a Garden Fork site, by the way, also. Visit our website, gardenfork.tv, and send us emails, send us ideas, send us videos, tell us what you think, and maybe Henry here will uh, feel a little better. All right, see you.